Hello and welcome back to week six of our Heirloom Afghan Crochet Along. I'm Alicia and I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to be working on block seven of our Heirloom Afghan Crochet Along. This is going to be an alternate puff stitch. So let's go ahead and get started. We're using color C, so whatever you've determined to be color C for your afghan, that's what you're going to want to get on your hook. We're going to do this in a multiple of 4 plus 2. So if you would like to use this stitch to make a larger piece later, just remember your beginning chain is going to be a multiple of 4 plus 2. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to chain 26. our beginning chain. Now let's just go right on into row one of our block for our alternate puff stitch. We're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook one, two, that's this one right here, and then in each chain across. So we're just going to go into that chain, grab our yarn and pull it back through so that we have two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both lo loops completing our single crochet. Going into our next chain here, we're going to go into the chain, grabbing our yarn and pulling it through. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook, completing our stitch. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete the single crochets to the end of our chain here. I'll see you at the end of the row. get to the end of your row, you're going to have 25 single crochets. So there's row one with 25 single crochets across. Row two. We're going to chain one and turn, and we're going to single crochet in the first four single crochets. So this is our very first single crochet right here. We're going to go into this chain, making sure we go through both the front loop and the back loop. Yarn over and pull our yarn through. Yarn over, pull through both loops on our hook. There's one single crochet. We're going to do four. So here's two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to complete a puff stitch. 
and this is how this is going to work. We're going to yarn over, go into our very next stitch here, grab our yarn and pull it back through so that we've got three loops on our hook. We're going to repeat that. So yarn over, go back into that same stitch and grab our yarn and pull it through. Now we've got five loops on our hook and we're going to do it one more time. Yarn over, go into that stitch, grab our yarn and pull it through, and we have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on our hook. Okay, and you just kind of want them pulled up a little bit even there. You're going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook. It makes this really nice little puff stitch. We're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. Now if you remember in our Trinity stitch, we did a chain to complete our Trinity stitch and hold it together. We're not doing that here and I'm going to show you why. We're going to do a single crochet in the next three stitches. So here's a single crochet here. One, two, three. And when we do those three single crochets, you can't see it from the side that you're working on. But if I flip this over, look at how it made this cute little puff. Doing the single crochet next pulls all of that down, compresses it into this cute little puff stitch. Okay, but you can't see it from the side that you're working on. But that's what that does. Now we're going to repeat across what we've just done. We've done our three single crochet. Our next one here is going to be another puff stitch. So we're going to yarn over, go into our stitch, and pull up a loop. We've got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, go into that same stitch, grab our yarn and pull it through. We've got five loops on our hook. And one more time, yarn over, go into that same stitch, grabbing our yarn and pulling it through. We've got seven loops on our hook. And I just kind of like to tug my hook a little bit, make sure they all just feel kind of even. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all seven. Sometimes it takes a little work. All seven loops on my hook. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next three single crochets. One, two, and three. And again, we don't see it on this side. We don't see the puff stitch. But I'm going to turn this over and look, now we've got two adorable little puff stitches in our work. So we're going to keep doing that across. We've just completed our three single crochets. We're going to go into the very next stitch and do another puff stitch. So yarn over, go into the stitch once and pull up your yarn back through. We've got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, go into that same stitch, grab our yarn and pull it through. We've got five loops on our hook. Yarn over, go into that very same stitch and pull your yarn up through. And we have seven loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through all seven loops. And we're going to go right into our next stitch and do a single crochet. And then we're going to do a single crochet in the next stitch. And a single crochet in the next stitch. So we're doing our puff stitch and then three single crochet. And as I turn this over, you'll see that now we've got three adorable little puff stitches on our work. Okay. We've completed our three single crochet. Our very next stitch is a puff stitch. Yarn over, go into our stitch and grab our yarn and pull it back through. Yarn over into the same stitch grabbing our yarn and pulling it back through. Yarn over, through the same stitch, grabbing our yarn and pulling it through. We have our seven loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all seven loops. And we're going to go right to our very next stitch and complete a, a single crochet.
single crochet in the next two stitches. And we're going to do a puff stitch in our next stitch. So remember, we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop three times. So let's count it that way. We're going to yarn over, go into our stitch, pull up a loop three times. One, two, three. I have seven loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull through all seven loops. Now we're getting here to the end of our row and we have one, two, three, four single crochet left. Very next stitch here and put in our single crochet. That kind of completes our puff. And we're going to single crochet in the next two single crochets. We're to the end of our row, but we have one last single crochet here. Do you remember at the beginning of our row, we put in four single crochet before we made a puff? Here we finished a puff and we've got three single crochet. We need to finish with four, so we're gonna go to our very last single crochet of the previous row and complete a single crochet. And here we have row two. And the way row two looks is we have four single crochet on each end and we have five puffs in row two. Isn't that adorable? five little puffs and as this comes together I had someone share with me that they thought that these looked like little cabbages in a row in a garden and I thought that was so cute that they said that. So we've completed row two. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Okay we've done, we've completed our chain one and turn. We're going to work a single crochet across the entire row two. You want to make sure when you complete your single crochets that you're getting both the front loop and the back loop of the stitch that you're working on. We're going to go right here into our first single crochet, going into that stitch, making sure we have both the front loop and the back loop, grabbing our yarn and pulling it through, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook completing a single crochet and we're just going to complete a single crochet all the way across our work. Now I want to note that when you get to where your puff stitch is right here you do see that there's a little stitch right here. Do you see the little V? Make sure that you work in the very top of that puff stitch. That counts as a, as a stitch right there. So just make sure that you place a really nice single crochet in every stitch across and don't forget to put one in the top of your puff stitch. I'm going to work my single crochets all the way across and I will meet you at the end of the row. chain one because we're going to turn that in our next round but I just want to lay this out and show you. So we have our puff stitches across here and we have our row of single crochet. Now the name of this square is the alternate puff stitch so that means our next row our puffs are not going to stack right on top of each other they're going to be in between each other. So let's go ahead and turn our work we will start on our next row and I will show you how that looks. I already have my chain one so I'm going to turn my work and we're going to single crochet in the first two single crochets. So this one here 
and this one here. So here's one single crochet, two single crochet, and now we're going to work our puff stitch in this very next single crochet. So remember it's yarn over into our stitch, grabbing our yarn and pulling up a loop three times. So there's one, two, three. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all seven loops on our hook, completing our puff. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to single crochet in the next three single crochets. So here's one single crochet, two single crochet, and three single crochet. And as I turn my work over, you'll now see that we have an alternate puff stitch. It's not right stacked on top of this puff stitch, it's over here. Our next one is gonna be right in the middle of these two right here. So turning our work back over to continue working. We've completed our three single crochet. We're going to complete a puff stitch in our very next stitch right here. Yarn over into our stitch. Grab our yarn and pull up a loop, that's one. Yarn over into our neck, into our same stitch. Pull up the yarn, that's two. Yarn over, pull up your yarn, and that's three. We have seven loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all seven loops. We're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and again when I flip my work over you can see that we have alternating puff stitches and this is the way that our pattern is going to go for the rest of our block so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue working on this next row which is row four by the way we've completed our three single crochet we're going to complete a puff stitch right here in this next stitch here so we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop three times there's one two three we have seven loops on our hook and we're going to yarn over pull through all seven and then we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches one two, three. In this next stitch we're going to complete a puff stitch. So it's yarn over, pull up a loop three times. Yarn over into our stitch and pull up a loop. There's one. Yarn over into our stitch, pull up a loop. There's two. Yarn over, pull up a loop. There's three. We're going to yarn over through all seven loops on our hook and single crochet in the next three stitches one two three we're going to complete a puff stitch in our very next stitch yarn over pull up a loop one Yarn over, pull up a loop, two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three. Yarn over through all seven loops on our hook. And we're gonna complete a single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Let's turn this over and see how this is looking. got our nice little alternating puff stitches and we're not quite done we need one more puff stitch for row four you want to have six puff stitches row two we had five row four we will have six so let's do one more 
working in our very next stitch we're going to do a puff stitch yarn over into our stitch and pull up a loop once yarn over go into our stitch and pull up a loop twice yarn over into our stitch and pull up a loop three times yarn over and pull through all seven loops on our hook and we have two single crochet left remember we started with two here at the very beginning of our row we're going to end with two at the end of our row so here's one and two and then we're going to chain one so we can turn our work and there we've completed row four and we have one, two, three, four, five, six little cabbages that we're going to be calling them. Now here's the point in our work that I would like to encourage you to grab block number two in our afghan. We've kind of been using this for a gauge. This is our half double crochet square. Take your work and just place it on top and see how it's looking. See how your gauge is looking. Check your gauge. You kind of want this block to be right around the edge here of your first row of edging and this one here. So this is fitting just perfectly right where we want it because when we get done with this block, we're going to do a row of edging of our color and then we'll do a row of edging with color A. Okay, so it looks like we're good. We're going to keep on going. Now for our next row, we're going to do just like we did in row three. We're going to single crochet in each single crochet across, starting with our very first single crochet right here. So there's one single crochet. There's two single crochet because we know we put two singles to end our row. This is the very top of our puff stitch, so we want to make sure we put a single crochet in there. And then we're just going to do single crochets all the way across. When we get to the end, we should have 25 single crochets. Now if you find that you're struggling with this stitch, with this puff stitch, you can always go back and watch the tutorial until you feel comfortable completing the puff stitch and then you can work on your block anytime you're ready. chain one and turn our work. Place one single crochet in each of the first four stitches. So let's do that. So here's one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet, and four single crochet. And we're going to complete our puff stitch in the very next stitch. So yarn over into our stitch, pull up a loop once, yarn over into our stitch and pull up a loop twice, yarn over, pull up a loop through our stitch three times so that we have seven loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all seven. And then we're going to go right into completing a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And this time I'm not going to turn my work over until we get to the end and see how we're doing. So we want to put a puff stitch right here in this very next stitch so we know that we're going to yarn over, enter the stitch, and pull up a loop three times. So here we go. One, two, three, 
yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook and then we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches one two three we're going to complete a puff stitch right here once twice three times a little cabbage <laughs> and now we're going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches complete a puff stitch here we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop three times once twice three times a little cabbage <laughs> and we're going to single crochet in each of the next three stitches two three we've got one more to do right here we're going to put a puff stitch once twice three times and look my white yarn is trying to get in on the on the action here let's get that out of the way pull through all seven loops on our hook and we're going to single crochet now we know we're at the end of our row and we need to do four single crochet one two three and four I'm going to chain one to turn and let's see how our row looks there we go there's all of our little cabbages all lined up in our perfect little garden isn't that adorable and just like what we've done before we're going to do a single crochet in every stitch across so that we can get things ready to do row four again so we're going to repeat row three and just do the single crochets in every stitch across Make sure that you get the very top of every puff stitch that counts. And make sure you go through both loops of the stitch, the front loop and the back loop when completing your single crochets across. If you only get one loop, your work's going to look a little wonky and we don't want that. We want a really nice looking square for your beautiful heirloom afghan. Make sure you keep your tension nice and loose. Don't get too tight through here. And take your time. You don't have to crochet at the same speed I do. I've come to the end of my row and I've chained one so I can turn it. And we're going to repeat row four. Now if you remember for row four, and all of the instructions will be down in the com in the description box below. We're going to single crochet in the first two single crochet. And then we're going to create a puff. Once, twice, three times. Yarn over and pull through all of the loops on our hook and do three single crochet. One, Do a puff stitch in our next stitch once, twice, three times. Yarn over and pull through all of the loops on our hook. And we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Another puff stitch once. Three times. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. 
I'm going to keep doing this and I will see you at the end of the row. we've got three stitches left at the end of our row and remember we started with two at the beginning of our row before we made a puff stitch so we need to have two at the end here which means we have this one right here ready for a puff stitch so we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop three times one two three yarn over and pull through all of the loops on our hook single crochet. We're going to chain one and turn our work to see how it looks. Look at our garden grow with all of these adorable little puff stitches. They're so fun to run your fingers over. So friends, I'm going to continue working on this with you until we're ready to start our edging. And just enjoy the music while we do our next rows. Always make sure you get the very last stitch in the row. A really great way to check that is when you lay your work out, check to see if it's even on the edges here. See how this is nice and even on the edges? We're nice and even on the edges here. If your work was going out this way, then you would realize that maybe you've put an extra stitch in somewhere. If your work is starting to go in this way, you may have missed a stitch. You can always count the V's across the top of your work, and on this particular square, we always want to make sure that we have 25. I've put in my chain so I can turn my work. This is repeating row two, and we're going to go ahead and put in a puff stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull up a loop three times. Yarn over and pull through all of the loops on our hook, and then we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches. We're going to go ahead and put a puff stitch in this stitch right here. single crochet. Puff 
half stitch three single crochet We started with doing four over here before we put our puff stitch in. We're going to end with four. So one, two, three, and four. We're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete row three again across with just a single crochet in every stitch across. If you're enjoying working on your afghan blocks for our heirloom afghan crochet along, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we'd love to have you. Make sure you click the notification bell so whenever we put a video up, you'll be notified that I've done something new. We have more than crochet. We have all kinds of fun stuff happening here on the farm, and crochet is just one of my passions. So we would love to have you come back every week and do a block with us for our heirloom crochet along. We're going to be completing 63 squares for a beautiful sampler afghan. Chain one and turn. This row, I'm going to start with two single crochet, and I'm going to repeat row four, meaning I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my puff stitches.
two single crochet here at the very end, one in each of our last two stitches. Chain one and turn. And we're going to repeat row three across, across the top here, just putting a single crochet in each stitch across. If you're watching this in a replay, I hope you're enjoying your time with us. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below and I will do my absolute best to get back with you and address any questions or concerns you have. Anyone is welcome to join our crochet along. There is a supply list video available for you as well as tutorials on every stitch that we do. And here we are coming to the very end of our row here. We have 25 single crochets across and we're getting ready to go ahead and turn our work over and complete another row to repeat. This is row two here, then we did row three. This is a row four. We repeated row three and we're going to go back and repeat a row two. And we're just going to keep this pattern going until we check it until we get to square. And if you've been in our videos before, you've seen how we work to uh, figure out if our work is square. We're going to start this row with four single crochet and then go into our puff stitch. One, two, three. Yarn over and pull through all seven loops on our hook, followed by three single crochet. It's the same that we've been doing this entire time. A single crochet in the last four stitches. We're going to chain one and turn and see how our puff stitch looks. And we're going to repeat row three. A single crochet in every stitch across. We should have 25 single crochets. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 
going to turn it right away because I do want to lay this down and have you look at this block and see how yours is looking. I want to have alternating rows of five puffs and six puffs. So if we just start right here in the middle, we see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Our next row should have five in between. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And it's important to just stop every once in a while, take a look at your work, and make sure that everything is lining up properly. And we're going to work on this until it becomes square. And if you've watched our earlier videos, if you've been crocheting with us for this, for this crochet along, you know that we just take this corner and we fold it down until we can make a perfect triangle. We can't make a perfect triangle with this one yet. We've got to go a little bit more so that this corner ends up over here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my work and I'm going to keep on working while we enjoy the music. Single crochet in our first two single crochet and then we're going to start right in with our puff stitch. completing the last puff stitch of that row and we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches chain one and turn I'm going to repeat row three across the top which is just a single crochet in each stitch across Here's our last single crochet of that row. I'm going to chain one and turn. And I know we're not square yet, so I'm going to do another row of our puff stitches. And we're going to start with single crocheting in the first four. 
single crochet. So this is a repeat of row two. have the directions in the description box below for your reference. I'll write them up so they'll be easy to understand in case you need to refer to them. started with four single crochet and then did a puff stitch. I can feel it with my fingers. So I know I'm going to do a puff stitch and I'm going to end with four single crochet. single crochets across the top and see where we're at. So again, one single crochet in each stitch across and we should have 25 single crochet as we go. So every once in a while make sure that you just count, double check to see where you are. Oops. say, I don't understand why we're watching you complete this entire block. You're not fast forwarding and cutting parts off the way a lot of people do when they do tutorials. Well, I understand that. This is a crochet along. I want to take you through the entire process of crocheting each and every block so that you can do your own with ease. What's a good, what good is a crochet along if I just fast forward through it and expect you to do everything else on your own? Let's fold this over and see how this looks. Nope. I think if we do one more row of the puff stitch and one more row of the chain threes, or, and one more row of the single crochets across, I think we're going to have pretty darn close to having a perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead, now I can feel back here, I know that my puff stitch is inward a little bit, it's indented, so I know the next one I want to have about right here, so I know it's going to be a repeat of row four, which means I do one single crochet, two single crochet, and then I go right into my puff stitches of pulling up the loops three times yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and go right into doing my single crochets over the next three stitches. I'm going to do a puff stitch, yarn over, pull through all through seven loops on the hook there, and 
go right into my single crochets over the next three stitches. It really because it really becomes a pretty neat pattern in your head. It's in the middle of your block here. It's in multiples of three. We're doing the yarn over and pull up a loop three times, creating the puff, and then following that up with three single crochets. in the next three stitches. there. I don't even think we need to do a final row three. We have our perfect square. Now again, depending on your gauge and depending on how uh, you crochet, you may need to put an additional row three at the end. Um, it just depends on you. Just you want to make sure it's square. So now that I've done all of this work, my goodness, let's see how this is going to measure up against our square two that we're using kind of for a gauge, and let's see where we're at. If I line this up just so, I'm right where I need to be. I'm gonna have room here for my row of edging right here along the bottom, my row of edging in the same green along the sides, and a row of edging right up here at the top. So I think this is just going to be a perfectly gauged little square for my afghan. So thank you, Square 2, for helping out with that. And let's just move straight on, when you're ready here, to do our edging. To do our edging, we're not going to finish off this color. We want our first row of edging to be the same color as our square. Now this is the right side of our work. This is the side that we want facing up on our afghan. So we want to make sure that we have these facing up. Even if we end with a row three, we want to make sure these are facing up when we do our first row of edging. So you want them facing towards you, facing up. Because we're going to do round one of edging around, and then we're going to do round two of edging around, and we want it so that our V's are kind of facing up like this because then they're going to be easy for us to join. You don't want it to be where when you finish it you've got the back sides like this because this is going to look bad when you join your pieces together if you've got one side up and one side down. They're not going to quite look the same as you join your squares together. So this is the right side and we're going to want right side facing up regardless of how you ended to get your perfect square. And if you're having any difficulty with that depending on where you end up just comment below and I'll work on that with you or you can uh, get in touch with me on my email which is in my about page. So we're here on the corner we've chained one because we turned our work. We're going to place three single crochets. One, two, three, right here in this very first single crochet. Now, 
that creates our very first little corner of our round one of edging. We want to work 25 single crochet across. Now we know we had 25 and you would just think you could just work one across and you'd be fine. But that's not so because we've used one for a corner. So we're going to work across and as we work across we're going to throw an extra single crochet in about right here and an extra crochet, uh, extra single crochet in about right here. That way we'll have 25 in between the corners because we want to save this very last corner over here for another corner. So we've got our three here for our very first corner and we're going to work 25 single crochet across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I always like to throw number ten in as that double one. So there's ten helps me so that I don't lose count. So there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, There's 19, and I wanted two extra ones, so I'm going to put 20 in the same with that one there. So there's 20. So every 10 is where I will double that up. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And here we're right here at this corner. We're going to put three single crochet in this very last stitch here at the corner and that gives us a really nice rounded corner so that we can rotate our work now and work along the side. Now if you've done some of our other squares with us you know what we do next. I, we have to work 25 stitches along the side of this work to this corner and there's no clear cut stitches for us to really work in so I like to take a little stitch marker, as I jiggle my camera around here reaching for it. I like to take a little stitch marker and I fold my work in half, just as a nice little visual. And I will stick that stitch marker about halfway down through my work there. And that lets me know that in between this stitch marker, on one side or the other I have to have 13 single crochet and 12 single crochet or I have to do 12 single crochet and then 13 single crochet. The point is is between here and here before I get to this very far corner I have to work in 25 single crochet. So we're just going to kind of work in the spaces as we can make them as we work our way down. And I'm just going to just work into the very next little available space. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, I lost my stitch marker. Twenty-three, twenty-four, 
24. <laughs> Just squeezed it in there at 25, even though I lost my stitch marker. I knew I was going to have to add a couple more in there. So there we have 25 across. We're just here to the beginning corner of where our beginning chain was. And I'm going to work a three single crochet right here where that very first chain was to make this corner. And we're going to work across where our very first chain was, our very foundation chain there. Now, this is a personal preference if you would like to hold your tail along your work as you do your stitches and crochet over it, you can. I always suggest still leaving a little tail that you can sew back in the reverse way so that it doesn't come out. But I like to tuck it away. I'm not a big one for crocheting over my tails. I sew them in later. But again, this is what you like to do and whatever you're used to, that's what you do. Now we're gonna do 25 single crochet across. And again, remember we're gonna have to add two because we're not gonna quite have enough and we're gonna do that around the 10 and around the 20. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, One thing I want to point out to you here is we're working across. This is our this was our beginning chain. Make sure you pick up two pieces of that. Don't get just one little random little strand because it's going to pull when you sew your work together and you're going to kind of have a gap. So make sure when you when you put your hook in, you're grabbing where there's a couple pieces of yarn there. You want what's left of that original chain. Two. really 15, <laughs> 16, 17, 18, 19, and we're going to put 20 right in there with that. There's 20. 25 and we've got one more right here this is where we're going to put three single crochet to create our corner so one two and three single crochet all in that one stitch to create our corner and we're going to rotate our work and let's try this again with our stitch marker I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make sure that it's a little more secure. I'm going to fold my work in half, my little block here in half. And I'm going to use my stitch marker to kind of indicate where the halfway point is of my work. And this time I'm going to try to actually clasp it so it doesn't come undone. And then I'm going to unfold this. And I know that right here, when I get here, I either have to have 12 or 13 stitches. If I get here and I only have 10, I need to take some of my stitches out and double up here because I don't want to have to double up too much here at the end. I want to make sure it's evenly spaced. So let's see what we get closest to here, 12 or 13. I know that on this end over here, on this side, I had to have a put, I had to put a couple of extra stitches in. So I think I'll um, put in a couple part way through. So here's one, two, Nine, ten, 
13. So there's 13. And I'm going to take my stitch marker out because I'm at the halfway point now. And I know that I have to do 12 across to get to my corner here. So I'm at 13. 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, let's double up right here, 24, I'll put it right here, 25. Okay, so we've completed round one of our edging, and we're right here where we started with this corner. We're going to find the very first single crochet, not the chain when we turn, but the single crochet. We're going to go ahead and just put our hook through there. And we're going to grab our yarn and pull it through. We've got two loops on our hook. Don't wrap your yarn around. You're just going to pull this first loop through the second loop. That's a slip stitch. We're just going to slip stitch that right there. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to fasten this off. I like to do two chains and then cut and give myself a nice long tail. I pull my yarn through and I like to pinch these two chains right at the top here and then give a nice tug and it gives me a very nice snug secure knot. That is not going anywhere. So there is round one of our edging. We've got one more round to go. And now what you're going to do is whatever color yarn you have decided to use to do all of your edging, minus white, whatever your color A is that you purchased most of for this afghan, that's what you want to start with. I'm going to go ahead and... Sometimes I do it, I just do these different. I don't have to start here on this corner, I can start anywhere I want. But you want to find the middle of your corner here. We're just going to go ahead and I'm going to put my hook through. Make sure all of my stuff's pulled to the back here, and I'm just going to add it with a slip stitch. There we go, and I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to go right back where I added that in, and I'm going to do three single crochet. One, two, and three. And this gives us the corner for our next round of edging. Okay? We're going to work 27 single crochet across. And you may say, well, we only had 25 single crochet before. How do we end up with 27? Remember, we did three in the corner, so I'm going to have an extra one on this side and an extra one on this side when we do our corners in the corners. So we will have 27 single crochet across that we're going to place a single crochet in. And also, really be mindful that when you add your second row of edging on, that you're still working on the right side, that all of these pretty little cabbages are facing up, and we're going to work our row across. So we want 27 single crochet across. One, two, Twenty, 
19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. And right here, we're going to put three to make a corner. our work. So this is just the first side of our edging for row two of our edging, round two. And now we're going to work 27 across here. And I like to count them because they are going to be important that they have the same amount of numbers. Because once we get all of our squares done, we're going to line up our corners and line up all of our stitches and sew our work together. And we want to make sure we have the exact same number of stitches to work with as we sew our things together. So it's important that we count and make sure that we have 27 now plus our corners of three for each side. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 27 across to my next corner while you enjoy the music.
26, 27, and I'm going to just go right here to the beginning of our round and slip stitch into our first single crochet. I'm going to chain two so I can finish off. Pull my yarn through and tug on that knot and give myself a really nice little clean knot. And there's our block number seven with our alternate puff stitches. And look at that. We're just pretty darn close to square two. I think by the time we get this all sewn together, you don't necessarily need to block. You can if you want to. Just be careful if you're going to use an iron that you don't melt your acrylic yarn. But there it is, folks. There is our beautiful little block of alternate puff stitches. And again, they remind me of pretty little cabbages in a garden. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this square number seven for our heirloom Afghan crochet along. I will be putting a tutorial up for square eight, and then we'll get together next week and we will complete square eight as we work on our afghan. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful time creating this afghan as we get more into these involved stitches and we're starting to get some texture in our blanket. I think it's beautiful. And when you have your blanket, you're just going to love rubbing your fingers over these little puff stitches. They're so much fun. All right, friends, until I see you again next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.